Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Dino Comics River, and today I'm going to show you how I photoshopped an old drawing of mine of X-Men's Rogue. Uh, for those who follow my Instagram account, which I hope many of you do, this is an actually, uh, I drew this picture a while back at a thing called the Chibi Hangout in Rotterdam. It was pretty fun, I mean, very small venue, not, not exactly a lot of people came to it, which was kind of disappointing, but I think it was because of the fact that it was gonna be, it was moving to somewhere else, or, no, no, it wasn't moving, they, uh, stopped doing it because they couldn't afford the venue. Shame, really, because, uh, what I really enjoyed about it was, you know, it had a, it was about anime, and I like anime a lot. And plus, it gave, and, you know, since not that many people came, gave some, ch gave some time to do some, uh, fan art, and... I remembered I did a fan art of uh, Rogue from X-Men there, and I had been meaning to Photoshop it for a while, and I thought, you know what, might as well uh, actually finish the job and uh, share it with you guys. Also, uh, what I wanted to report is, uh, since September is just around the corner, I'm going to be attending the Comic-Con Amsterdam. That's right, I've, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, conventions, simply because the organization has always been spot on. And, yeah, well, the organizer is always super nice. And it's always just been a really fun event. I mean, I don't get why uh, some people don't like it. But still, it has a major attendance. And anyway, I'm just happy that Holland's really getting into the whole con feeling. Because, I mean, if you look at uh, places like America and England, they have, like, a lot of these, uh, uh, let's say, I wouldn't exactly say they're aimed towards specifically comics, but more into... Uh, geek culture conventions? Yeah, let's just to say they're into geek culture. And I'm happy that Holland is also embracing that. Comes, I mean, before that we usually just had uh, the the Stripdage, which was uh, organized by the diehard comic fans, but you know, comics as in uh, the traditional European ones like uh, Tintin, uh, Spiru, and I can't actually think of anything any others right now, but I mean, it was really for the old, for the, for the true uh, diehards, and sadly, a lot of young people around uh, my age, usually from uh, teens to uh, young adults, they didn't exactly uh, read those comics, and I'm just thankful that uh, pl things like uh, Amsterdam Comic Con are starting to uh, rise up, because I mean, that's, you know, something for us. Something for the real geek in everybody, because it's not just catered to the traditional European comics, but it's also catered to, you know, American comics. And also, more importantly, anime, because that's something that, you know, everyone's getting into. And I mean, it's not just Amsterdam Comic Con, which I'm excited for. I mean, uh, later on in uh, March, if you've seen another one of my videos, you saw me uh, setting up for the Rotterdam Comic Con, which was also awesome. As well as the uh, Dutch Comic Con, which is actually Holland's official Comic Con. I know I've been saying Comic Con a lot, but you know what? It's awesome. Comic Con is awesome. And these aren't exactly affiliated with uh, the San Diego Comic Con, because I don't think the con is actually a uh, trademarked word. And actually, I've been looking into starting of uh, my own uh, sort of thing in, in The Hague, which is where I live, because uh, The Hague used to have Anime Con. And that was really fun and really cool because it was in this place called the World Forum, and it was an awesome, uh, it was an awesome venue because it was, it was like, well, it was an area, it was a building specifically catering towards conventions and such, more in like small scale. And I mean, every floor had its own uh, cinema room, uh, lounge area, and such. And I mean, it was perfect. And it was like built on top of each other. Every floor was built on top of each other, so you couldn't exactly get lost easily. And it was just so welcoming. And and the crappy thing is, Anime Con is now going to uh, a place called Ahoy, which is this big stadium area in Rotterdam. I mean, it's it's awesome because I mean, it's an even bigger venue. But I think they're going to lose a lot of uh, that feeling of community they had at Anime Con, which is just a shame, really. So I think. Personally, that sucks because now the hay has nothing to do with uh, geek culture. So I'm trying my best to get something uh, going. So if you guys uh, want to know more, please message me, leave a comment below. Or even, you know what, just send me a message via Instagram to see what your thoughts are. But you know what, I've been rambling. Oh, that's mostly because you guys, you guys know this process of my drawing to death. And I 
just need something to talk about. I mean, lately my videos have been using uh, no uh, real narration, just been relying on the fact that, uh, well, just been relying on music. So I just wanted to change this up a little because I just recently got a new webcam because I tried uh, using a new using my phone again to record video and that just overheated. Could be because of the recent heat wave we've had here in Holland, but also because maybe I use my phone to take a lot of pictures and I have a lot of stupid uh, games on it, so maybe it couldn't really handle it anymore. But I bought a webcam pretty cheap off this uh, ball.com for about 25 euros, works perfectly. I just need to figure out which programs I can use. So far, the ones that are most uh, useful are are not QuickTime. Let me mind, let me remind you about that. I'm using either F FaceTime or Photo Booth. Then I'm editing it in uh, iMovie or QuickTime. That's something I kind of learned the hard way. But you know, it's still a learning process. So there's I'm obviously going to mess up some more stuff. But you know, if you uh, are patient with me, it'll I'll uh, give you something in the end. Just don't worry about it. So a little bit about this piece. It's actually the traditional 90s rogue from the cartoon which I grew up with. I always liked that because they really played on her southern accent and also that whole uh, tragic love story they ha she had with uh, Gambit. I'm going to do another piece of him. And I mean, she was one of my favorite characters al along with uh, Storm and Wolverine. And for some reason, I just really liked Rogue a lot because, I mean... She was a very tragic character, yet she was very, uh, upbeat. She was a very cheerful person, and I don't think, uh, the movies kind of did justice in that sense. But then again, it was about a very young rogue, and, you know, she's still pissed off about her, uh, powers, and the fact that she, whenever people get close to her or even touch her, they run the possibility of dying. And also, in the cartoon, they actually had it that, uh, she, uh, held on to this one, uh, other mutant that had the power of uh, flight and super strength. I don't know what her name was, but apparently she held on too long and she absorbed her powers permanently because I hope, as you all know, Rogue has the ability to absorb other mutants' powers through physical contact, but only for like a short period of time, such as the longer she holds on, the longer she can use that power. I don't know the name of the mutant, but I mean, in the cartoons she that happened, she held on too long and Newton's powers were on her permanently, so she could fly and have super strength, which made her more uh, useful in combat rather than just the absorption powers. And yeah, I mean, like I said, she's a real tragic character, but she's still so upbeat, and that's what I really enjoyed about her. She had, all, she was so, she was so full of sass and such. I just wanted to show that in this drawing rather than just, you know, her uh, the tragedy about her whole life. And I mean, yeah, okay, yes, it's kind of hard for the movies to do that because, I mean, they didn't exactly have the time nor the opportunity to show that, but, you know, they did their best, and I think it was the... I think they did it quite right. I mean, so far, my favorite X-Men movies are uh, Days of Future Past and Logan. That's mostly because, I mean, it's it has Wolverine. And, uh, wait, oh yeah, Days of Future Past did have Jubilee, but only for, like, a short while. I'm actually intrigued to see how uh, New Mutants goes because... I read or I saw the trailers and it was like a, it was like a horror movie set in the Marvel universe about like where the mutants are staying in that asylum place and like either their escape from it or their ordeals in it. So I'm intrigued to see how they're going with that. If anything, if any Marvel movie should deserve the horror movie treatment, it should have actually been Ghost Rider. Maybe make a sort of action horror movie like they did with the mummy. And by the mummy, I mean the Brendan Fraser one, not the Tom Cruise one, because, I mean, this is not his fault, it's just the writing just kind of went nowhere. Okay, and that, okay, let me put it more specifically. It went everywhere, but it got nowhere. And yes, I'll be the one to admit it, I'm willing to give Nicolas Cage a second chance. Okay, not a second, but a third chance at the writer. I think it could be something cool. I mean, if they uh, played it on the fact that uh, the goat, that the spirit of vengeance is itself a separate entity, they could really uh, play along with that. And if they were clever, I'd have him, I'd have the voice of the spirit of vengeance be played by Jim Cummings, because I'm pretty sure he could do a good, either Jim Cummings or Mark Hamill. They could do it pretty well. And I would love it if uh, Ron Perlman played Meph Mephistopheles. That would be awesome. So anyway, about this Pete, this pick. Sorry, I keep uh, rambling about other topics. I wanted to show off that's her sassiness, 
you know, more in the pose and also her uh, facial expression. And I kept thinking, who could I have her fighting against? Because, I mean, the spectrum of uh, X-Men villains is so wide and vast, it's kind of hard to pick. But then I thought, I thought back to, car- to the cartoons and thought, oh, of course, the Sentinels. And when, and when I think back to the cartoon and also to the fact that uh, America has these things to hunt down mutants, I'm going like, oh my god, that is such a waste of, of resources if you're going to hunt down people in your own uh, country because you could easily win any war if you just sent these things out. I mean, think about it. The country with, like, these humongous robot, mech robots that can, you know, capture people, if you sent that into battle, you could win every single war. You'd be the undisputed superpower of the world. Yet you're just going to waste it on picking up, uh, on increasing a, an already... No, you're just going to use it to create even more prejudice against your own country. It's stupid. That was actually the dumbest thing that Bol- that Bolivar Thrask did in Days of Future Past, creating the Sentinels. Okay, yeah, he was scared about the mutant stuff, but for fuck's sake, if the Russian, if communist Russia found out that America was developing these things, they'd be shitting their pants. Why didn't they, you know, do something about that? Or at least, you know, use them against Russia. Well, okay, I'm pretty sure there are storylines where they use the Sentinels in actual warfare besides mutants, but you know what? It, would, it could have been exactly uh, taken on a bit better in Days of Future Past, my own opinion. I didn't exactly know what were the, what the insides of a Sentinel were, so I just used a lot of these uh, tubes and wires, just jammed them in there, because I'm going to do it with this really awesome spark effect, like it's just being freshly ripped out, and there's you know, the wires are still live, and the electricity is flying everywhere. So I'm thinking, uh, doing stuff like that. And as you can see, when I'm doing the shading, I like to use a big blob of uh, paint or color in one area, and then use the, the eraser tool, I kind of mold it to how I think it be, should be shaped. And I just noticed that the fist marks on the face are way too small for her to match Rogue's fist, but you know what? I shouldn't mention it, because now I'm pretty sure you can also now just see it, and now it's the only thing I can think about. But you know what? It's done, and I'll know for next time. Actually, lately I've been do- focusing way too much on drawing DC characters, and I haven't been doing much uh, Marvel stuff. So far, uh, uh, Storm and Rogue have been the only ones that I've drawn from the X-Men uh, as of late. I mean, I did do uh, Wolverine and Jubilee a couple uh, months back, but that was uh, after. That was actually before I did this whole uh, thing on Batman, because I did this. I did a whole bunch of uh, drawings about Batman, and I set them in different. Uh, I did a whole uh, s- series about Batman heroes and villains because I wanted to try something where I make them into uh, cards and then I can sell them at uh, conventions. But anyway, the drawing is done. As you can see, uh, lots of sparks, lots of cool effects. And of course, the sassiness in her face. And of course, I did a light texture, something a bit different than normal, but I think it worked out well. And I want to thank you guys for enduring my ranting, and I hope to see you in the next video. And keep in mind, I'll be at uh, Amsterdam Comic Con in September. Thanks for watching. Bye!